Today I'm gonna show you how to do a head gasket on a 98 Honda Civic 1.6 liter. This procedure works for 96 to 2000 models. Get your mindset ready. Don't sabotage yourself, man. Don't doubt your capabilities of doing this kind of procedure. But I'm gonna show you step by step. You can do it. Don't give up. But before we get started, I'm gonna show you the tools. Let's check out the tools. Okay, here we got a template. This is the template we're gonna put the head bolts in, but that's for later. Carburetor cleaner to clean the engine block, a pry bar, breaker bar, uh, needle nose, long needle nose, um, flathead Phillips, 12 millimeter wrenches, and 10 millimeter wrenches. I also got these uh, ratcheting wrenches, the 10 and the 12. Okay, we got a mirror, we got a magnet, Long screwdriver, extension, quarter inch, smaller extension with the universal swivel for the quarter inch ratchet. Another extension for the 3H ratchet, 3H ratchet. Spark plug socket, 5 8 uh, pliers, uh, half inch ratchet with a 17 millimeter deep socket. An extension, compression holes. You don't really need this, but I'm gonna show you how to do, get top dead center with this, all right? On the compression stroke. With the balloon, and the assortment of 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter sockets. Also with this universal swivel for the 3 8 all right? Check this out here. This is a one inch extension. This also is gonna be useful for certain things when you're pulling off certain uh, bolts and nuts. Okay, you also need a stick. I'm gonna show you why later, all right? Okay, and you need a drip pan put under here to catch the coolant. Okay, first of all, first step, what you wanna do is pull the number one spark plug out. But before you do that, label every wire, okay? One, this is cylinder one on this side. This is where it starts. One, two, three, four. That's the order of the cylinders. All right, but the firing order is 1342 in case you get mixed up later on. All right, but first mark every wire, tape it. All right, so pull all these out, get these out of the way. Okay, pull the spark plug out of number one cylinder. Get the hose, put it in like that. What you're gonna do, look for the compression stroke. Get the 17 millimeter deep socket on there, stick it on the crankshaft pulley. Okay. Now that I have the socket on the crankshaft, what you wanna do is rotate the engine right there for the compression stroke. It already passed the compression stroke, but let me do it again. Okay? Twisting the crankshaft right now. Waiting for the compression stroke. Right there, that's the compression stroke. But, you don't really need this hose. You can have someone turn the engine, and put your hand there, okay? As you're cranking the crankshaft, you can also put your hand there and feel for pressure. It's gonna have to cover the whole spark plug well in order to feel the pressure, all right? You don't really need that. Next, get this. Get the long screwdriver, stick it in there like that, and get it up to top dead center. Right about there, that's top dead center. Okay. Okay, now that we have the number one cylinder at top dead center, the timing marks will be lined up. The one down there is right on the money. This one in here will be right on the money too. It'll be, it has an indentation that has an up mark. After you get that done, take this out, move this. Now you take this off. Take this cable off. This is where your magnetic tray comes in handy. All right, keep all your things in the magnetic tray. And this cable goes here. Loosen this up here. This is a 10 millimeter. All right, 10 millimeter bolts 
inside the valve cover. Get your pliers, pull this off here. Take that off, break it free a little, pull it right out. Next, what you want to do, shake the valve cover loose. All right, I already broke it loose, but just crack it loose. So just break it loose, pull that off. See this in here? That's a clear indication of a blown head gasket. When you got slush like that, that's water. Water and oil mixed inside the engine and getting tossed around. That's no good. That's definitely a blown head gasket right there. Or it could also be a cracked cylinder head or a cracked engine block, either one. But most of the times, it's a blown head gasket. Also here on the rocker arm, we have moisture everywhere. Water everywhere. Water, shouldn't have that. All right, that's a problem. Next, you got a 10 millimeter bolt here and you have a 10 millimeter bolt here. Use the magnet so you don't drop stuff. This is the upper timing belt cover. Okay, remember how we just set it at top dead center on the compression stroke? And I told you these marks are lined up, that's it right there. This indentation that says up on the camshaft sprocket is pointing straight up. And the mark down there is right on the money, all right? So we got all that done, all right? That's figured out. Okay, next you wanna take off the distributor. You're gonna take off this bolt here, this one here, and this one over here. Okay, take this one off. Push this loose. And this one here. Before you take this loose, scribe this. Mark it like I did there. See the marks? Mark that there. Okay. This distributor cap and rotor, you do not have to take it off. The reason why I got it off is because I want to show you something. This rotor here, this rotor is pointed at number one spark plug. Why is it? Because we rotated the engine over here and got this at top dead center on the compression stroke, which leads this number one rotor to point at number one spark plug wire, which is this here, this one here. So in there, it's pointing at that. That's when the spark occurs at top dead center on the compression stroke. Now, what you do is pull this off. Pull this off like that, set this to the side. Next is the exhaust manifold heat shield. Take these off. These are 12 millimeter bolts. First, you gotta take off this here. This is the oxygen sensor connector. Take that off. All right, then work this off. Just work it. Pull it right out like that. Okay, next is this exhaust manifold. Next, that bolt right there, you want to take that off. That's a 14 millimeter bolt. That's an exhaust bracket bolt. After you get the bolts off, and you get this bracket bolt off down there, try out the exhaust manifold. Just like that. It's gonna be a little hard, but work it. Just like that. Okay, next, what you're gonna do is take off this hose here, all right? It's kind of hard to get to. So take off the clamp, like that, and push it back. Take off that, that hose. Then push it out like this. Just like that, okay? Get this out of the way. Now work the other clamp. Okay, now that you got this clamp out, this here, take this off from the air housing. All right, take this off, move this to the side. Get this out of the way, all right? The reason why you're taking that off, now we're gonna work that bolt. Okay, there's a bolt back here, right here. Can you see that? That bolt back there, let me point to it, is right there. That's the hardest bolt to get off on this intake manifold. You gotta get that one off. That, all these bolts are 12 millimeters. So, work it like this, okay? You gotta get that off. So get this, 
take that loose. Get your magnet. And you're gonna put your magnet right next to it as you spin it off. Okay? Spin it off. Like this. Use this rubber on this to spin it off. Just like that. Since you got it loose. You're ready to catch it. Right there. You got that off. Make sure you keep track of everything you got, okay? That's why you want to have the magnetic tray so you don't lose anything. Now let's take off the intake manifold. Okay, on some intakes, down here, you have a bracket that attaches to the bottom of the intake manifold to the side of the block. On this vehicle, we don't have one. But on yours, you might have one, so keep that in mind. So, take this pry bar, stick it in there, and just pry this loose. Yeah, there's gonna be water coming out, but oh well. Pry this loose, take it off like that. Next, what you wanna do is you wanna take everything that is attached to the cylinder head off, okay? This holes, this, 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 this bracket here, and any other thing that might be on there, that you don't see here, that, but that might be on yours. All right, so let's take this off here. This is the hose clamp. The coolant hose going to the uh, cylinder head. So what you want to do is you want to put a rag over the hose like that. And just break it free from its, the bond it has in there. Take that off like that. this loose that's that on that now we'll take this off break it loose pull that out this is the power steering pump bracket here that you're breaking loose just this top bracket this top bolt okay next is the stick why do we got this stick this is where this comes into play we're going to put the stick right here Slip it in there, and we're going to take off this camshaft sprocket and suspend this in the air. Next, time to break loose the cylinder head bolts. Get your breaker bar, 14 millimeter, six point socket, crisscross pattern. Go in a crisscross pattern, right? That. that. Okay, once you get the head bolts all loose, take them off. But get your template and put them in order. Put them in a template and draw something on it. Put the camshaft, make sure you draw the camshaft on this side. Start taking these off. Put them in the hole. But the best thing for you to do is to change your head bolts. Now, time to break it loose. The head is going to be bonded to the gasket between itself and the block. So, you got to break it loose. All right? You just pry it. Pry on it. And make sure you don't bust through the cylinder head. All right? Just find good areas to pry on. Break it loose. Try to do it like this first. Okay, there we go right there. A little loose, so I'm just gonna work it little by little. Alright. And you can also get a rubber mallet and beat on it to break it loose. There we go right there. Now that right there is loose. So let's pull it off. Get all this out of the way. Pull this off. See, I should have tied this back, but I didn't tie it back. Oh well. There we go, right there. That's it, right there. That's the head. Turn it up. 
Next, get a brass brush with the carburetor spray. Clean the pistons. Just like this. I'm gonna clean this one too. Same thing. Make sure you use brass because brass won't scratch any of this. Don't use the metal ones. Okay, make sure when you're cleaning the surface of the block deck, replace the blades. Like focus on one area, all this, with one blade. Then switch to a new one for this section and just keep switching. So, see the water in there? It's on the pistons. The cylinders, get a rag, soak all that up. The water will create rust on the cylinder walls, okay? So make sure you lubricate these also, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some oil. I'm gonna put some oil on the cylinder walls like this. Especially if you let this sit overnight, make sure you oil these cylinder walls like this, okay? Keep them oiled because you don't want any rust to build up. Next, what you want to do is you want to clean the intake manifold gasket off, all this extra gasket left over, and then you want to clean the exhaust manifold gasket. If you notice here, I put rags here to cover the piston holes and coolant passages. So keep that in mind. So next, get the blade and just cut it like that. You just slowly work it like that. And it'll come right off. Well, sometimes it's a lot harder. Same thing here. All right. Well, this doesn't have much. Now that you have all the mating surfaces clean, you want to clean the cylinder head bolt threads, which are in the block. I usually run air through it like this. Wrap the rag around this nozzle, blow it out. So I can feel all the water coming up on the rag, just like that. You want to do you want to do each and every single hole. Okay, these here. These are called alignment dowel pins. What they do is allow the cylinder head to go on straight onto the engine block. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to take them out. But first, you need to keep this surface protected. Use an old gasket, find a socket. This one here is a quarter of an inch. Tap it in, squeeze on it, and slowly work it out. You're working it this way at the same time. Pull it out like that. Same thing on this side. Tap that in a little, squeeze down on it, and work it out. You're pulling out this way at the same time. Or you can put your hand behind it and work it. Make sure you put that gasket on the bottom. That way you don't scratch the surface of the head here. And there you go, that's how you take out the dowel pins. They're that simple, all right? You don't need any fancy tools or anything. Okay, next, install the dowel pins. Get on like that. And make sure it's right on the money. Every single hole, check all the holes. Make sure everything is good to go. You got to do a dry fit. That way you know exactly that everything is right. For some head gaskets, you can flip them like this, and they'll match. But they'll be off a couple holes, oil ports or coolant ports, and you can't even tell sometimes. So just make sure you do a dry fit. Make sure that's good to go on like that. Okay, after you get everything ready, you got the manifolds out of the way, the gasket fits, you got it on the right way, now it's time to put the head on. All right? Make sure you oil this up in there, okay? But no oil contaminants on the gasket at all. The gasket must be dry, and the block surface must be dry, and the cylinder head surface must be dry. You can use acetone, 
lacquer thinner or anything they can clean up any grease or oil okay make sure you know where your dowel holes are all right i'm focusing on these dowel pins right here all right i know where the dowel holes are they're right here one's here and one's there they match up with the bolts okay good to go ready here we go like that and rest your arms on stuff okay don't fight it rest your arms and slowly working on that okay you're looking for those dowel pins all right so that's your main focus is the dowel pins somewhere around there now I'm just filling those pins Shifting, moving stuff around. Make sure I can land them right on the money. There they go right there. Just landed on the dial pins right there. And now I'm shaking it. Rocking it. Sliding. And that's it right there. They're on the dial pins. Okay. Do a double check. It's still in the air though. Alright. Keep that in mind. It's still in the air. So let's go back here. Take it back here. So now you're looking back here. Make sure everything looks good back there. All right. First, you want to try to rock it down on the dowel pins. Sometimes you're going to have to fight it, get it down. So here, see how I got a gap right there still? And I got a gap there. I'm looking at all that stuff. All right. So you got to slowly bring it down. Okay, next thing you want to do is you want to clean your cylinder head bolts. But like I said at the beginning, you want to get some new ones actually. But I'm not going to get new ones, I'm going to use the old ones. Because these things stretch. Some of them do. Not all bolts stretch, but some bolts are torque to yield bolts and they stretch. But what I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil on the threads like that. Just get them all oiled up. Okay, now time to put the cylinder head bolts on. Remember, the camshaft sprocket is on this side. So pull that off like that. One more thing too. Get your finger full of oil. And see this? Show this part right here. Rub that with oil. Okay? This part here, that part here, that's where. That's where this is going to sit, this washer, all right? After you get the cylinder head bolts in, bring them all down. So let me show you something. Right when I get this one to the bottom, you're going to see the cylinder head go down. See that movement? And do it just like that. Same thing with back here. Okay, good enough. And just get them all snug for now. Don't go like this. Don't tighten that one, then that, then that, then that, then that. Go like this. Corner, corner, middle, side, side. Crisscross pattern in the sequence. Okay, next what we're gonna do is tighten the cylinder head bolts. On this Civic 1.6 liter, you got four steps. The first step is 14 foot pounds, second is 36, third 49 foot pounds, fourth 49. And you got to do it in a sequence. That's one through ten. Starting with here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? And that's the sequence for the torque there. So first we're going to start with 14. Alright, I'm going to keep that there so you guys can keep looking at it. Okay, what you do is get the torque wrench. See the 10 there? There's a 10 right there. Get the zero on that. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Lock the back. Now that's locked in place at 14 foot pounds. Alright, get the 14 millimeter socket. Get the six point, okay? 
Don't get the other one. That way you don't strip anything. The bolt, the head bolt, or this. All right? Okay, number one is right here. Okay? When you do your torque, do a perfect swing. Don't stop. Okay? So, just continue all the way to a click. There's 14 right there. Number two. 14 right there. Three. 14 right there. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine. Remember, don't stop. Ten. Okay. Right now, this is torque at 14 foot pounds. All right. What that's doing, what the sequence is doing is it's pushing down the cylinder head evenly. If you were to do this whole side first, and then like that, this whole cylinder head would cock to the side like that and would not seat properly. So the purpose of the sequence is to bring down the whole head evenly, straight down. Now, step two is uh, 36 foot-pounds. So loosen this up. Take this to 30, set that zero on 30, right about, where's it at? Oh, right there. That's 30, we want 36. That's 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 foot pounds right there. Tighten it and do it again. Start with number one again, back here. Remember, get, get a good distance so you can provide a good arc so you don't have to stop. You don't want to go like this. Don't jerk it, all right? One continuous motion. Ready? This is for the click. 36 right there, foot pounds. Do this one. Two. Let me start this one over here. Three. Three, four. Set the zero at 40, in the center of uh, 30 and 50 is what we're going to take it. That's 40 right there. Now, take it to 9. 42, 43, 44, 10, 48, 49 right there. 49 foot pounds, almost 50 foot pounds. All right? Now, one. Okay, remember, this is for that click. And don't stop the motion. Three, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 49 foot pounds right there. Now you gotta do one more, and that's it. Okay, this is the last torque right here. This is, 40, this is set at 49 still, and let's do it again. This is just locking everything in place. Done deal right there. Everything's torqued down. Remember, 14, 36, 49. Okay, get a wood stick. Don't use metal on this camshaft sprocket. Just tap it in. Get a small mallet. 
You just tap it in. Once you get it lined up. And once you know you got it going, like that, tighten it up. Put the bolt on it. Next, you want to install your exhaust manifold gasket. Get your pry bar, put it in there, line up the hole. Slip it in like that. Get ready to pull it up. This here. Something like that. You're gonna have to work it. Just like that. What you want to do, line up this hole first, slowly work it in. Push this back some. Put the other holes in there. Bring it in evenly. Done deal. This is the power steering bracket. What I did is I loose I took this bolt out, then I loosened up that one there and that one there in order to get some movement here. That way I can have some play so I wouldn't have any problems installing the uh, cylinder head. So keep that in mind when you're taking loose this bracket so you can get the cylinder head in there and keep it from touching on that. Okay, before you put the lid on it, make sure you oil everything up. The camshaft, the rocker arm assembly, valve springs, everything. Just go off on it. Next, put the exhaust manifold heat shield. But first, you want to put the oxygen sensor connector through the hole. Install the upper radiator hose. Next, you want to install that exhaust manifold bracket bolt. Right there. This is the 14 millimeter. Next, you want to install the distributor. This is still pointed at number one spark plug. That little white mark is number one spark plug. This rotates like that. And the firing order is 1342. This is right at number one cylinder. This deal goes like that. And there's a notch in there. To where this fits in perfect. Get that right there in a notch. Get your mark lined up where you marked it at in the beginning. And it's good to go right there. Right now, this rotor is pointed at the number one spark plug wire. If you come over here, look down there, that mark is right on the money. This here is an indentation that says up. And we got that at the 12 o'clock position. We got the one down here right on that mark. That's money right there. That's exactly what you want. So now what you want to do, since we got the distributor on and everything else together, before you put the lid on there, what you want to do is you want to spin it by hand. You want to do a dry spin now. Why are you doing that? You want to see if anything is binding. You want to see if the valves are touching the pistons or if they're timing. You want to spin the crankshaft with the ratchet and you want to rotate the engine a couple times or a few times in order to see if anything is binding or if anything is making noise or hitting. For example, the, uh, the valves and the pistons. This is an interference engine and if this engine, if this timing belt breaks, these valves will hit that piston. All right, so right now, we want to see if our timing belt and everything is all good. So I'm spinning it around a few times and I'm going to bring this back up to top dead center and to see if our marks line up. I watch that down there. All right. And we are at top dead center right there. 
That's good right there. Done deal. We're at the 12 o'clock position with our up indentation, and we're good to go down there. The mark on the crankshaft pulley is right on the money. So we're good to go now. Now we can put everything together. Then okay, time to put the valve cover on. Put a little silicone on the edges. Put a little silicone on the edges. Put a little silicone in this area here. There and there. Put the bolts on, done deal. Three, four. Make sure you check the coolant and fill it up. Check the oil level and do a visual inspection. All right, just do a visual of everything that you did. Before you start the car, make sure everything is connected, all the connectors, all your bolts and everything's on. Just do a walk around. Okay, I gotta change these wires because uh, I had a misfire. Two cylinders, and the car was running rough before we, uh, before the head gasket blew out. Let's start her up. Okay, let me see this. Go ahead and uh, crank it up. All right, I haven't started the car yet. Now, let's start it up. All right, this is gonna be the first time starting the vehicle. So here we go. I did that already. Don't rev the gas or anything, okay? So the head gasket's done, so let's start it up. Here we go. It's running rich right now. Turn those off, please. It's running rich right now. It's running a little rough because I got the fuel. Because I cleaned the inside with a lot of the carburetor fluid. So you're gonna let it burn off for a little bit, okay? And then you're gonna check to see if any water's coming out the back. All right, so far, everything looks good. Started right up, too. So that's a direct result of preparation right there, man. Make sure you prepare before you do a head gasket. That's the key to having a successful project. <clears throat> After you start it up, go to the back. Pipe. Just look at it for a little bit. Make sure no water's coming out. We're good to go. Okay, now we're gonna let it run for a little bit. After a little while, you're going to check the temperature, but let it warm up for a little bit, okay? And then, that smoke right there, that's normal. I think that's because I got the chemicals all on the engine, the where I cleaned it out with. Then, after the car warms up, you're going to check the timing, but you got to let the engine warm up. Turn it off real quick, turn it off again, and then restart it. Start it again. Turn it off. Start it again. Okay. I'm gonna let the engine warm up for a little bit and I'm gonna come back and show you how to check the timing. Okay, in order to check the timing, pull this off. Pull that panel off. This green thing just fell off of this. This blue connector is what you're looking for. This is a service connector for the uh, timing. Get a paper clip, like this, bend that thing, just like that, and ground it, okay? Ground it just like this. Make sure it's in there good, or else it won't work, okay? That's in there tight, see that? Okay, now, next, you go over here. 
go up here, turn ignition on. Next, turn the ignition on, and you'll see the check engine light. Come on, now turn it on. If it stays on, your connector down here is good to go. Now, after that light's on, now you can check your timing. So now you come over here, get the timing gun hooked up, positive on the positive, negative on negative, number one inductive pickup lead on number one spark plug wire. Put this on zero, got this set to zero, right there. We are right on the money. Okay, you see the white mark? That's not it. Okay, you see that white mark right there? That's not it. The mark to the left, the three marks to the left of that white mark right here, the one in the center is the one you're looking at. That's right on the money. You see this pointer? That's the pointer where that needs to be aimed at. And we're right on the money. Timing's all good. 12 degrees before top dead center. And that's how you check your timing. Okay, that's a done deal right there. 12 degrees before top dead center. Short term fuel trim is at 0%. Long term fuel trim is at 0%. Coolant temperature is good. Air inlet, calculated load. It's all good, man. That's it for this. And that's it right there. That's how you change a blown head gas. A lot man. of people don't talk about hell no more, man. You don't hear about hell anymore. Not in the church, anywhere. You're not going to hear about it at all. They don't preach on hell no more because we've been so desensitized today about hell, man. We've been so desensitized. Notice that? That's because the church has been dismantled. It's getting handled. They say Satan doesn't have to fight the church anymore. He's joining the church. What does that mean? There's a lot of hypocrisy, man. There's a lot of compromise in the church. Man, it's bad today. All you soldiers in Christ, man, all you soldiers in Christ, recognize that. Proclaim your faith the way you used to. I know some of you get nervous, man. Don't sweat it, man. Don't worry about what people think about because you came to Christ, because you know God. Don't be afraid of people, man. This world is full of influence, man, that is going to hell, that are bringing, people are dying every day, man, going to hell, man, who don't even know the Lord. Look at this, man. Where's it at? Right here. Check this out. <coughs> Look at this. The Joseph. 666. Six, six. You think this is a joke? These guys think this is a joke, man. Some of you guys do too. I want to talk about the church folks. All the compromisers, man. Those of you, those of you who are going to church and you still smoking weed. And you still talking crazy, man. You still and you still cursing. You still acting up. You still act the same way you did when you was not saved. There's a problem with that. Why? Because there's no conversion. You haven't been truly converted. What does that mean? All things of old are passed away. All things new are created by Christ. That means Christ has created a new you. Don't let the world influence you. The Bible says in the last days, in the last days, some shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That means that a lot of people are going to fall away. There's going to be a great falling away of the church. For all you atheists, the Bible says, the fool in his heart says there is no God. I didn't call you a fool. That's in the Bible, man. Don't look at me. I didn't write the Ten Commandments. You know, some of you guys, some of you guys complain and whine about me talking about Jesus. I ain't stopping, man. In a way, I'm sorry. I used to be so embedded in the streets. All I lived was foul, man. There ain't no way I'm going to sit here and not talk about what Jesus Christ did for me. Yes, he freed me. Straight up. And I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to proclaim the gospel to the day I die. I'm not stopping for nobody, for nothing. God has blessed me with the ability to do so. So I'm going to put it out there, man. My main objective is to preach the gospel to you. Straight up. 
Yeah, I show you all the car stuff, but that's not what it's about. For me, it's about representing Christ and letting you know that you don't have to die in sin. You don't have to die and go to hell, man. You don't. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins so that you can be saved. The Bible says God is not willing that any man should perish. That means God don't want you to die in sin, but you have to make your own choice. You make your own decisions on it. If whether or not you want to believe in God. Don't let TV or the world or anybody dictate who you believe God is or who you don't think God is. I tell you this straight up, man. You did not come from a monkey. Straight up. You did not come from a monkey. You were not created from stardust. That's what these astrologers tell us. You were not created from the Big Bang, the supernova they talk about. Yeah, all that Morgan Freeman stuff, man. All that Bill Nye, the science guy stuff, man. No, you weren't. Straight up. You did not come from rocks, man. Look at this. This right here. They say we came from rocks. Big explosion, man. They say this is how life is generated. This is how life was formed. Two rocks, man. Okay? Look at them rocks. Now, let them rocks sit there. Just wait for them rocks to construct an intelligent design, such as the universe, the world, the human, the, the animal, everything, and nature. You did not come from a monkey, man. That's what they teach you in school. That's a lie from the pit. That's what they taught us all, man. That's what they teach you today. They're still teaching that junk. Don't forget, man. Jesus loves you, man. And he died on the cross for your sins. What does that mean? He came down and he died on the cross so that you don't have to die and go to hell, man. Tomorrow's not promised. Another dude just died down the street from my house. Tomorrow's not promised, man. You can say God does not exist all you want. That doesn't matter, man. It will never change the fact that God exists. You're only changing your perception about God. But you will never change the truth. They try to destroy all the Bibles, man. They never got rid of them. You can't. You can't destroy the truth, man. It's been around before you were around. They try to destroy this way back in the days. Persian Empire, Roman Empire, Babylonian Empire. They couldn't destroy it. Why? Because God's word is forever, man. You dying without Christ, that means eternal damnation, man. Straight up. You don't have to believe me, man. Go read the Bible. Dust your Bible off and go read it. Straight up. All my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a new day. This is a new age, man. Your days, your days of proclaiming the gospel are going to be met with relentless opposition from here on out. It's always been like that. Christians have always been persecuted from day one, way back in the day, man. They were feeding Christians to the lions back in the Roman Colosseums. Yeah, some of you know about that. But today, are going to be met with some serious opposition. So what? Bring it. Stand firm and contend for the faith. Don't ever back down, but don't compromise either. You're going to be persecuted too. Many people are going to hate you because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. His name, man, steers people up. His name, Jesus Christ, you hear it. When people hear it, it makes them quiver, makes them nervous, makes them trip out. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about God, man. Why? Because you know in your heart, man, you have violated the rules, man. Because you know in your heart, something ain't right. Something ain't right with you. You ain't living right. You living too raw, you living too foul, you're living too nasty, man. Just remember this stuff. We're living in a fallen world. There are a lot of people who need to be saved. The Bible says, when you stand before God, this is what's going to happen. Many will come to God and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out demons and all that stuff? In other words, they're going to be standing before God, pleading on their knees. The Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
They're going to be on their knees pleading for God not to send them to hell, the lake of fire. Why? Because you didn't get it right, man. This is your one opportunity as long as we live. Like I told you earlier, tomorrow's not promised, man. Like I told you, the, the job site the dude that just died on, gone, man. 20-something years old. Another dude we were just talking to, we were just sitting at this memorial over here, and two dudes roll up. It's, they're the buddies of the dude who just died. This was the other night. Gone. I don't know. Where is he? The Bible says to be absent from the body, to be present before the Lord. It means you're going to stand before God right when you die, straight up. That's what that means. Let's talk about YOLO. Let's talk about Shrimp Life. Let's talk about Molly. All that new stuff that's out, man. All that stuff that's influencing society right now. Horrible, man. Bad, man. That stuff is just bad. Foul. Horrible. Don't let people who roll like that influence you. The influences we have in the hoods, guess who they are? The drug dealers. They're these rappers who spread this poison, man. There's not too many people out there who are good role models. A lot of them are shady, man. A lot of them are just foul. No good at all, man. Like I always say, man, put Jesus Christ first. Don't ever back down. Maintain your faith all day by staying in the Word. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by seeing. Listen to the Word, man. Read your Bible. Stay in church. Stay planted. Stay firmly planted. Don't ever back down, man. Never. You got some serious fighting to do. This is war, man. War has been waged against you. By who? By Satan, man. And he ain't gonna stop. But neither should you. But most of all, God ain't stopping. God will never leave you. God will never abandon you. Keep your head strong. Don't ever give up. And stay fervent for the Lord. Stay hungry. In Jesus' mighty name, Go we'll smash on it. Don't we'll never back down. You ain't done fighting yet. You better not back down. Don't we'll never back down. Don't we'll ever give up. It's seeing you. Keep fighting. Handle it.